Welcome to the Oxford School of Drama. Uh, we're in our barn, uh, rehearsal space. And today uh, we have two um, third year actors from our three year course who are going to work with us today. This is... Cynthia. Joan. Welcome. Uh, we're going to be playing with some monologues today. Uh, each of these actors has a monologue. And we're going to be running it through some different exercises and exploring what we get from those. Cynthia, and then I'll come to Joan, just thought you might be able to tell us something about, you know, your journey just be before coming to the school and mm -hmm. then how you heard about the school and then where you are now. <laughs> I was at the Stockwell Playhouse Company and then I went to the Brit School from year 10 to year 13. Mm. And then I came here at 18. Um, and it's been great. I think I've, I've relearned exercises that I was taught in the Brit School over here and actually like putting it into form and making bold and playful offers. Because I think I, I love being comfortable. And I think that's what the school is trying to get out of me and has gotten out of me. And the confidence in just giving in my offers, even if it's wrong, or mm. even if it doesn't work, it's still me giving something and being playful and being there and active and present. Yeah. How about you, Joan? Yeah, I grew up in Penzance in Cornwall. Um, was just really fascinated by the theatre there, mainly outdoors, particularly a company called Wild Works who do like big outdoor site specific. I was like, oh, this is magic. I want a part of it. Mm. So joined Cornwall Youth Theatre and and various different routes like that to try and be a part of this Cornish magic, whatever it was, and then decided I wanted to come to OSD. So in this first exercise, we're looking at journey, which is to say the structure of the speech, how it changes, what's the beginning, what's the middle and the end. And a great way to do that with actors is for them to do it physically. If I don't cry, it don't mean I don't love you, all right? It's just... Hard, isn't it? Look, when I get out, I reckon we should move to the countryside. We can get chickens and we can ride ponies and do all those sort of things that people do in the countryside, like gardening and stuff. In a little cottage or something. No, I know. It's mad, isn't it? People still live in them type of houses though, Amy. It's true. I've seen it on location, location, location. We could be free. That's what we need. And we wouldn't have to be scared of anything. I don't know what I meant to say to you. Not like you're gonna remember, so. Just know I'm gonna make it so much more better for you. That's a promise. Because life ain't been no fairy tale for me, Amy. Well, them stories they're gonna tell you, that they're gonna tell you once you start school and that, it's a load of shit. Talk to me. I mean, it, it felt like what is more gut and what's more heart, and what, how do I feel it with her, mm -hmm. and how far of a distance is it? Mm -hmm. um, because I think there's a lot of like stories and a lot of like journeys between the relationship with the baby, mm -hmm. and I don't think there's that that self with the baby yet. So mm -hmm. I think that's what she's trying to explore here. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah. I think I, that's totally right. I think we should do it again. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, just, just and that play that idea that you're just talking about, which is gut. Yeah. I know, it's mad, isn't it? People still live in them type of houses though. It's true, Amy. I've seen it on location, location, location. <laughs> we could be Ted free. And we, that's what we need. We wouldn't have to be scared of anything. I don't know what I meant to say to you. Not like you're going to remember so. Just know I'm going to make it so much more better for you. That's a promise. Because life ain't been no fairy tale for me, Amy. So we're going to do something completely different. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would like you to imagine that just before this scene, this speech, you have been told that you can't keep the baby, um, you can't take it with you where you're going. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so I want you to bring that right into the speech. 
that, that, that immediate circumstance. And I'd also like to imagine that the room has a two-way mirror and the people that have told you this are also watching your last few moments with the baby. We're going to start to explore circumstances, which is to say where the character is, what might be happening. And I'm going to suggest to Cynthia that there's a two-way mirror in the room so that there are people watching her um, have her final moments with her baby. So it should give the actor uh, lots more choices in the space. When do I want privacy? When am I speaking directly to the two-way mirror? Um, what's it like being watched when I'm trying to be intimate? And circumstances are a fantastic tool for the actor because they allow them to behave and to explore the behaviour of the character and make really exciting choices. That's what we need. We'll be dead free. And we wouldn't have to be scared of anything. I don't know what I meant to say to you. Not like you're gonna remember, so. Just know I'm gonna make it so much more better for you. That's the promise. Because life ain't been no fairy tale for me, Amy. All them stories that they will tell you, that they're going to tell you once you start schooling that, it's a load of shit! They always make it seem like princesses are always waiting on some bloke to come and rescue them. No one can save you in this life apart from yourself, Amy. Do you hear that? I could write better stories than that crap. Good. Great. What did you get out of that? I like that. Did you? Mm -hmm. Talk to me. It's just, it, like you said, it is the obstacle. And because I think I was actualizing, like doing it just to the baby, but it's like, where am I? Like the stuff of like, where am I? Who's involved? And obviously knowing that she can't keep this baby, that's an extra layer on top. And it's like, does that make her emotional? Because I kind of felt emotional in that mm. as well. So. That's good, yeah. What does obstacle mean to you? Obviously, it's a word we've been using a lot, but what, how, what, how would you describe that? I would describe it as... Okay, so you have the, the person you're doing it to, but obviously there's, there's something in between that that's not making you reach that person mm -hmm. or that thing. So you have to do different tactics to get mm -hmm. through those obstacles and... For me, one of them was not having her, someone watching me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, does that change the circumstance that I'm in? Of mm. course it does. We're going to explore the stakes of the scene. Um, and this is where you can get lots more interesting, exciting work if you make the stakes really high. So I'm going to suggest to Cynthia that the character has one minute to say the speech and we're going to have another actor counting down just to really apply that pressure and again it's about behaviour, it's about the actor making choices in the moment, bringing them out of their comfort zone maybe um, and seeing what urgency it gives to the speech so the actor should find lots of new things uh, doing it in this way and then maybe deciding what they want to keep from that work uh, going forward. Sixty. This is it then. If I don't cry, it don't mean I don't love you, all right? It's just hard, isn't it? Look, when I get out, I reckon we should move to the countryside and we could get chickens, we can ride ponies, we could do all them sort of things that people do in the countryside, like gardening and stuff. And in a little, in a little cottage or something, and we wouldn't have to be scared of anything, all right? <sighs> Look at you, just sleeping. Yeah, like that. Bertie. Like, you haven't got the care in the world. Oh, you're so beautiful. Let's try it again. Why is this so hard? Because, because it's, well, why do you think it's hard? The obvious, everything that's going on, like getting to talk to her, the people coming in. Yeah. What do I want to say? Yeah. Even I know what I want to yeah. say. Yeah. But yeah. Maybe make a different choice. Maybe don't pick up the name. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. I say, let's say for this one that, it, um, that she's in, you know, one of yeah, those the, more sealed ICU yeah. things. So, 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 so picking it up is not an option, but communicating and her hearing your voice absolutely mm -hmm. is. 
Sixteen. This is it then. I, if I don't cry, it don't mean I don't love you, all right? It's just hard, isn't it? Look, I think when I get out, I reckon we should move to the countryside. We could get chickens, we could ride ponies, we could do everything that people Fourteen. do in the countryside, like gardening and stuff. And in a little cottage or something. Bertie. I know, it's mad, isn't it? Oh, but I've seen it on location, 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 Amy, it's true. And we, we, we dead free, it's what we need, and we can do everything together. Look at you. You're so beautiful. This makes it even harder, you know? Like, Nine. I'm actually your Eight. mum. I'm, I'm a mum, and Six. I've been waiting to love you Five. my whole life. Four. The Three, yes. two, and one. Good. Well done. How was that? That was like really nerve wracking. Mm. But yeah, it definitely helps. So like the the urgency. Absolutely, and I think that's the flavour here. Yeah. Um, when the actor gets the opposite of this exercise is all the time in the world mm. to really explore your thoughts. Yeah. But here we might look at in the speech when are the thoughts just absolutely moving through? Yeah. You know, you know, and, and, and making a larger picture. Where is the urgency in the speech? Mm -hmm. And when does when does the character and the actor need to be? So this would be the urgent one. Yeah, this is the urgent one. <laughs> what I'd like to explore with Joan's speech is this idea of what is a throwaway thought and what is a thought that's really weighted by the character. So you're kind of playing with oppositions, which gives the actors two really clear choices to make. And hopefully you should start to see them kind of connecting with this idea of obstacle. What is easy to say and throw away and what is difficult and more meaningful in the speech and it can be a great way both to organize the speech in terms of thoughts and to start to explore the emotional journey of the speech as well i was reading about this man who spent 10 years trying to paint an apple so it looked just like an apple that was 18 to 28 then he spent the next seven years trying to paint the apple so it looked nothing like an apple this is the sort of thing that interests you, that used to interest you. I was thinking, if he lived another 10 years, I mean, what would he do next? Would he give up painting altogether? Would he kill himself? You know what it takes to kill himself. Would you do that? Maybe he'd start again with an orange. I was thinking, how hard can it be to paint something so it looks nothing like it? You could just scribble all over the page. You could paint the whole page black. Don't you think? You could leave the whole page white. But maybe it had to somehow be an apple. You could just write apple underneath it though, wouldn't you know? I think he was a difficult person. Like you are a difficult person. Were, are. If I was the one who was dead, you'd still be talking to me. Are you not trying? If you'd wanted to talk to me, you could have stayed alive. Okay, Joe, good. I'm just going to continue with this yeah. exercise. It's what quite, did you get out it's of it? quite hard because I felt like. Because it's kind of all filler and it's kind of all important at the same time, I felt like I'd be like, oh, throw that away. No, don't throw that. I got, got a little bit in my head about Great. what is and isn't, which is good because it's starting me thinking about that. Yeah. But it would be like I'd throw something away and be like, no, that's important. Or I'd say something directly down the lens to her and I'd be like, oh, but that's kind of filler. Because of the speech really crosses over. Right. What is direct at the target and then what is also just like, I'm going to speak because if I stop, I'm going to feel far too much. So that's what I want to talk to you about. Y yes, it's a game, so play it as a game, but I'd like you to connect more with why you might be flicking something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I might start on the camera and I might be like, oh, I don't want to be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't want to look at the grave, so I flick, so I flick, so I flick. 
but I'm coming back. So so it's that's version one of the game. Mm -hmm. This will help you if you try and explore those impulses. Yeah. 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 So the, the reverential is the connected, perhaps the emotional life of the scene. Uh -huh. But the flicking is to get away from that. From that same thing, yeah. From that same thing. Because you don't want, maybe you don't want to be there, or maybe when you're there, mm. it's, it's not always comfortable. Mm. But then maybe you do want to sit in it. Yeah. And the other thing I would say to, to, to your first point, which is completely fair, is just choose one or the other just, and go yeah, with it. Yeah, go with it. Cool. Yeah, because it could change every time. I think so. And that's maybe after an exercise like this, you might go back to your script and after doing it three times and be like, what, what actually works here? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. is the character trying to do? I was reading about this man who spent 10 years trying to paint an apple so it looked just like an apple. That was 18 to 28. Then, he spent the next seven years trying to paint an apple so it looked nothing like an apple. That's the sort of thing that interests you. That interested you. I was thinking, if he'd lived another ten years, what would he do next? Would he give up painting altogether? Would he kill himself? You know what it takes to kill yourself. Would he do that? Maybe he would start again with an orange. I was thinking, how hard can it be to paint an apple so it looks nothing like an apple? Surely you could just scribble all over the whole page, or you could paint the whole page black, or you could leave the whole page white. But maybe it had to somehow be an apple. You could just write apple underneath there. Maybe not. I think he was a difficult person. Like you are a difficult person, were. Ah. Oh. If I was the one who was dead, would you still be talking to me? Are you not trying? If you wanted to talk to me, you could have stayed alive. Good, Joey. What we get from that? Yeah, it's. I mean, it sort of is a little strange with the, some of the flips, but the ones where you really are doing it to get rid of something really makes sense. Mm. Like, and the ones that you wouldn't expect to flick away. Mm. Like, I can't remember. The one I really felt then was maybe he, maybe he just started again with an orange because she she's not giving him an opportunity to start again. Mm. And I've never really felt that line like that in learning the lines. But in that line, I was like, yeah, maybe you got to start from the fucking beginning. <laughs> you, and that gave you that feeling, which was new. Yeah. I think what it's doing is it's getting you into the emotional life of the scene. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a reason. And I think if we were to take this further, you could explore different qualities of throwing things away. As a second exercise with Joan, we're going to explore conditioning forces, uh, which is an Uta Hagen exercise, where the actor really focuses and concentrates on a circumstance around them, normally environmental, which can really affect their behaviour. So here, we're going to look at the fact that it's freezing cold and that Joan, the character, is outside. Um, and they still has to play the speech, play the meaning, but what happens to the actor when they also become kind of consumed, if you like, by a really strong force? I was reading about this man who spent 10 years trying to paint an apple so it looked just like an apple. That was 18 to 28. Then, he spent the next seven years trying to paint an apple so it looked nothing like it. And he died. Okay, I'm just going to pause. This is lovely. But what's the issue with sitting on the ground? Energy goes down into the ground a bit. No, just physically, because we're still in the Oh, it'd be freezing cold. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so good power the impulse, you know, <laughs> but then get but then experience that feeling. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, so you need to just be making this much more real for yourself. Yeah, 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 of course. Lovely, good. It's a great impulse, but so but happy. then you feel it. Yeah, <laughs> feel physically at odds with your environment will feed the emotional mm. journey. Yeah. All right. And really easy. You forgot your coat because you're because you just did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you're not thinking straight. Mm -hmm. Outside. I was reading about this man who spent 10 years trying to paint an apple so it looked just like an apple. That was 18 to uh, 28. Then he spent the next seven years trying to paint an apple so it looked nothing like it. Then he died. This is the sort of thing that interests you, that used to interest you. I was thinking, if he'd lived another 10 years, well, what would he have done next? Would he give up painting altogether? Would he kill himself? I mean, you know what it takes to kill yourself. Would he do that? Maybe he'd start again with an orange. I was thinking, how hard can it be to paint something so it looks nothing like it? I mean, you'd just scribble all over the page, wouldn't you? Or you'd, you'd paint the page black, or, or you'd leave the whole page white. Maybe you have to somehow be an apple. You could just write apple underneath it though, couldn't you? This is good, Joe. Yeah. What else can you do to keep warm? Let's just carry on the speech and let's just make that our yeah. goal, the point of concentration. Yeah, where from, sir? Let's go from, I was thinking how hard can it be to paint something. Yeah. You know, just do whatever you need to as a human being to be warm. I was thinking, how hard can it be to paint something so it looks, so it looks nothing like it? You could just scribble all over the page, don't you think? I mean, you could paint the whole page black or leave <laughs> the, whole, the whole page white. Maybe it had to somehow be an apple. You could just write apple underneath though, couldn't you? Maybe not. I think... Oh. I think he was a difficult person. Like you're a difficult person. What's interesting about Joan's speech is the target, the person who the character is talking to, is imagined, or in this case, deceased. Um, so it's not a physical target for the actor, um, which is, you know, very common in drama. But what could be really interesting here is giving the actor a physical person to talk to. So, for example, when they're asking questions, they can really try and get a response to that question from another human. Um, so we're going to bring Cynthia into the space to work with Joan and also allow Cynthia to say no and stop um, when she doesn't want to uh, engage with him. This is the sort of thing that interests you? No. That used to interest you? I was thinking, if he'd lived another ten years, what would he do next, do you think? Would he... Give up painting altogether. Would he kill himself? Stop. You know what it takes to kill yourself. Would he do that? No. Maybe he'd start again with an orange. I was thinking, 
How hard can it be to paint something that looks nothing like it? You could just scribble all over the page, couldn't you? No. <laughs> or you could paint the whole page black. Couldn't you? It's you could leave the whole page white. But maybe... Maybe it had to somehow be an apple. You could just write apple underneath it though, couldn't you? Stop. Maybe not. Stop. I think he was a difficult person. Like you are a difficult person. No. Were. No. Ah. No! If I was the one that was dead, would you still be talking to me? Are you not trying? Stop. So now that we've seen those actors play with those exercises, we're gonna allow them to do one more take and just in quite a free way, see what they retain from that work when they try and put it all together. I don't know what I'm meant to say to you. It's not like you're gonna remember this so. Just know I'm, I'm gonna make it so much more better for you. Because life ain't been no fairy tale for me, Amy. All that story that they're gonna tell you, that they will tell you once you start school and that, it's a load of shit. They make it seem like princesses are always waiting on some bloke to come and rescue them. No one can save you in this life apart from yourself, Amy. Do you hear that? I can write better fairy tales than that crap. Look at you, just sleeping there like that. Like you ain't got a care in the world. You're so beautiful. That's making it harder, you know? I can't quite believe you came out of me. I'm a mum. I'm actually your mum. <laughs> I think I've been waiting to love you my whole life. It's just been building up and up and it's trying to find where all this love should go. They're trying to tell me that this is the best thing for you. Well, it's not like I've got a choice, is it? I was reading about this man who Spent 10 years trying to paint an apple so it looked just like an apple. That was 18 to 28. Then, he spent the next seven years trying to paint the apple so it looked nothing like an apple. That's the sort of thing that interested you. I was thinking, if he lived another 10 years, what would he do next? Would he... Give up painting. Would he kill himself? You know what it takes to kill yourself, would he do that? Maybe he'd start again with an orange. I was thinking, how hard can it be to paint something so it looks nothing like it? You could just scribble all over the page, couldn't you? Or you could paint the whole page black. You could just leave the whole page white. But maybe it had to somehow be an apple. You could just write apple underneath though, couldn't you? <laughs> Maybe not. I think he was a difficult person. Like you are a difficult person. Wow. So I mean, Sim, we'll just start with you. You know what? You know what? What were you getting from those exercises? You know, and what did you end up with? 
I loved it because I do like a bit of redirection mm. and that's basically what it was like but working it through the exercises and like I mentioned like the gut and the heart for me was like potent so like and that basically is just what we learned in second year with Kirsty, mm-hmm. the movement um, director and it was just stuff like where the placement in it and it's linked to like your animal as well mm-hmm. which is interesting and gut for me is more like instinctual mm. emotion not emotional but like powerful and the connection and the heart is more like the emotional aspect of mm. it and i think that's what she was going through a lot in the speech um and what led me into the monologue was just thinking about the stakes because mm. i think you can kind of forget that when you're in it do you know what i mean but like thinking about it being limited time mm. instead of unlimited time what does that bring because I think that's what I was struggling with with the exercise when I had to come in and I only had like a minute. It was like, shit, I need to actually say this stuff. And it's a lot of urgency and it's real. And yeah, it was interesting. Maybe it's because it would like brought you out of your exactly. comfort. Yeah. You know, yeah. if it wasn't uber comfortable, you were doing some lovely acting. Mm-hmm. But then that just then became very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable, you know, yeah. How do you how do you work in this space exactly especially with the countdown hearing that i was like oh my days like what is actually (laughs) oh it was crazy but yeah yeah and so what is that process for you if you do exercises you shift the speech around what what doesn't what does an actor do when they then go away at at home for example and then Mm -hmm. like how do you how do you sift through that stuff i think it's just the freedom because i think you obviously learn it and then like you you're comfortable with like the circumstances but like things started to be more clear to me like what was the thing she wanted to actually say which was you're so beautiful mm-hmm. I've always wanted to love you but it's just you know it's hard and stuff and it's, it's basically the inner and the outer mm. like where does it hide and where does it show mm. that's um, lovely so that was nice yeah yeah. Great. And Joan, um, how about you? Same kind of question, same kind of territory. Yeah, I really enjoyed it because it's like there's something about working through exercises when you've got a speech at like blank canvas stage, you've just learned the lines and you go straight in with exercise. It means you don't set any words in any certain ways, but you also don't set like the thought or why it's said like that. Mm. So like adding layering exercises like that makes me feel quite free as an actor because I I'm sort of finding the words through exercise rather than idea. And then if you can trust that that will be there when you just go to do it, it often is. I often find if you're like, right, now I'm doing the speech and I've got this from the exercise, you hold on too tight to the work Mm -hmm. and then you're trying to bring the exercise into the speech. But there's something about just learning the lines pretty neutral and playing them through these games and then just going, that's in there now somewhere. Mm. So I really enjoy working that way. Fantastic. Okay, well, thanks so much for your work today. Um, it was a lot of fun, so thank you. Thank you. All right. Fun. Cheers. <laughs> thank you for watching. We hope that you've enjoyed gaining a bit of an insight into some of the ways that we work in the school um, and some of the exercises that we, that we play around with with the students. And uh, thanks for joining us. Bye now.